Hey, it doesn't take a PhD to test your pH. I'm Rick with Leslie's Pool Care Tips, and today we're gonna talk about how to test your water. Getting an accurate water test is gonna help you make sure you don't undertreat or overtreat your pool, which is gonna help you save time and money and help make sure you keep your pool clean and clear. When it comes to water testing, there are a few different ways you can go about it. You can use a test strip, a liquid test kit, or you can always bring a sample of your water into your local Leslie's for a free water test. First, we're gonna talk about test strips. They're quick, easy, and really cost effective. So, really simple. First, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna grab a test strip. Okay, it's really important to make sure your hands are dry. You don't wanna get any water in there, it'll ruin the test strips. You grab a test strip, you're just gonna dip it into the surface of the water, you're gonna pull it out, and you're gonna put it on the back of the bottle and you're gonna see that each one of the pads has a particular range or reading that you should get for the particular parameter. Now note that different strips from different manufacturers, there may be some delays in the reading, so always make sure to just refer to the instructions on the label. The other way to test your water is with a liquid test kit. Now, I always prefer to use what is commonly known as a DPD kit. It's gonna give you a little bit wider of a range uh, but the things that you're going to be testing and it's extremely accurate. The other great thing about using a liquid test kit is most, maybe not all of them, but most actually provide you with color-coded instructions on how not only to complete the test, you can see the caps are color-coded depending on what specifically you're going to be testing, but they actually give you this really great chart on the back. So after you've done the test, you can clearly see um, what you need to add to the pool. So a chemical you need for chlorine or your pH, alkalinity to go ahead and get it back in balance. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna complete a test as you're gonna see, it's really simple. First thing is you wanna use a bottle or you just wanna be able to, to use something so that you can get your water from at least 12 to 18 inches below the surface. You know, rather than just getting it um, from the surface of the pool, it's gonna be a little bit more accurate. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get a water sample. All right, so we've got some water in our bottle. This is just to make it a little bit easier when you're filling up the different instruments here. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna test for chlorine and pH. You know, you also notice the BR on here, that's for bromine. So if you've got, you know, a pool or an indoor pool that uses bromine or a spa that uses bromine, you can also use this kit for it. So it works for chlorine and bromine. So for chlorine, we're just gonna go right here to the chart. As you can see here, the chlorine is yellow, so we're just gonna follow the instructions on here. It's gonna tell you to just go ahead and fill the water up to the line. You now you don't wanna overfill it because again, what you're putting in there, it's dye. So if you put too much in or too little and it's gonna skew the readings, so you wanna try and get it as close to that line as possible. So now that we have the water in there for the chlorine, we're gonna do the same for the pH. All right, now for the chlorine, as you're following the recommendations, it's gonna tell you the first step is to add five drops of R001. Now one thing, whenever you're using any of the reagents, it is really important not to touch the tips on any of the reagents. You don't wanna contaminate them. Uh, if it does get on your hands, always make sure to wash your hands. You don't wanna be using this and then, you know, it's chemical and then rubbing your eye. Um, probably not a good idea. So um, another tip when you're, when you're using these as well is make sure that the bottle is completely vertical rather than sideways so you get a nice even and uniform drop coming out of the bottle. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add five drops. We see the water starts turning a little cloudy. Now, again, following the instructions here, we're gonna add R002, excuse me, R0002. Again, it's asking for five drops. Again, let's not touch the tip. Turn the bottle completely vertical. Five drops in there. And at the same time, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna check the pH. So we're gonna add, really easy to see, it's red for your pH, it's R0014. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna shake this up. Now it's, it's best when you're reading this to have a good background and have some good light, you know, depending what's behind it, could kind of change the readings that you're getting. But remember, um, you know, you're not trying to be a complete chemist out here, trying to get some pretty good general readings for your pool. 
put the test block up and you're gonna take your readings. As you can see, we've got a bit of a problem for this particular pool. There's no chlorine in it. So we would absolutely need to address that. Then taking a look at the pH, actually, if you wanna take a little closer look, um, the pH looks pretty dark red, so that pH is actually pretty high. So that's something we're gonna to need to address as well. So you can notate that somewhere, or you can just start reading the directions. Again, open this up to see how you would address those. So look, at, I'm not gonna go through each and every single one of the tests. I just wanna give you an idea and, and really show you the difference between using a test kit and a test strip. And then whether you're using a liquid test kit or you're using test strips, always keep it inside. You don't wanna leave that stuff outside. If you leave it outside, um, it's gonna go ahead and probably damage um, the chemicals or shorten the shelf life of them. So keep them inside in a cool, dry, um, dark environment, and it'll make sure that the stuff lasts a little bit longer. And here's a pro tip. When you're testing at home, whether you're using test strips or a liquid test kit, download our app. Our app is really easy to use, and you're gonna take the results straight from your test strips or your liquid test kit, and input them into the app. Once you do that and you click next, it's gonna give you a customized treatment plan specifically for your pool. Okay, so I've showed you the test strips and I've showed you how to test your water with a liquid test kit. Now, if you don't wanna do either of those, you can grab a container if you don't have a water test bottle, something like a mason jar or an empty water bottle. Just make sure to clean them out before you take your test sample. Um, be sure that test sample is taken at least 12 to 18 inches below the surface and then bring it into your local Leslie's. We'll test the water for free and give you a customized treatment plan specifically for your pool. Oh, and one last thing. If you're testing your water at home at least once a week, be sure to bring it into Leslie's once a month. They're gonna be able to test for things that don't show up on your test strips or test kit at home. For additional information about water testing, you can click the link below or stop into any one of the Leslie's pool supply stores where we're always happy to help. Thanks for joining me for Leslie's Pool Care Tips.